We're going now to do our scripture readings, and it's uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 34 and verse 22. I'm sure, even though now we are advancing technology, that most of our readings are coming from the iPad and the mobile phones, we still have people who are able to use the Bible. So when we see that we finish to get our uh, pages right, I would like us to say amen. Exodus chapter 34, verse 22, I'm going to read it in two versions. The first version I'm going to read is from the New International Version. I guess this one is, um, this is, which, which version is this? Okay, so this one is saying, and thou shalt observe the feast of the weeks of the first fruits and of wheat harvest and the feast of the ingathering at the year's end. But the, also the Exodus uh, 3422 in New International Version reads as follows. You shall celebrate the feast of the weeks, that is the first fruit of the wheat harvest, and the feast of ingathering at the turn of the year. May the Lord bless his word. Amen. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church. Um, the song we're going to sing today is called A Quiet Place, and it talks about um, how sweet the time is that we spend with Jesus and how refreshing it is when after we've spent that time with him we go out to the world ready to face whatever challenges will come to us. So I hope you'll be blessed by the words. <laughs> Hazel would sing 
wherever she was. Sometimes the singer was dancing. And we didn't know that there was going to be a time when Hazel would stand up in the church and sing. So every time we see the beautiful girls stand here to sing, it's a very special blessing. We are now starting our, our program of service with the sermon. But let me just have a, a short prayer with you. Let us pray. Our Father, what in heaven, we thank you that you have given us the opportunity to be able to come and worship and be able to remember you that what we see on the table is through a process of your creation. Help us to see you in all this beautiful blessing and indeed in our circumstances. This is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. I would like to um, welcome you all in a very special, in a very, very special uh, day and special service. And this special service is not anything else. It's just a celebration of God's creation. And I, and I want to try and emphasize that point. That point that it is just not just a celebration, it is a celebration of God's creation. To be able to create something that eventually comes on the, on the table as rice, as sada, as whatever, but comes from his creation. Amen? We don't see that as we worship him. We don't see that as we woke up every day because we don't want to think deeper. We are able to sit on the table and say, let us pray. But we don't remember that, we don't even think that before this food came on the table, what happened? What happened for this food to be on the table? Amen? There was a process. A process that until you understand it, you'll be able to appreciate the harvest. I would like to have um, two lovely girls, my, my daughters. Kuti and with, with, your, uh, with our friends, you were your leading songs together. Can you come here and amen? Amen. They, would, they should be saying, why are they picking us? But I pick them because they're my daughters. So uh, you stand, one side is standing here, you've got your microphone, and um, I'll give you this. Well, I'll give you this and this. <coughs> what are we going to do here in the first place? You saw that we had we had lovely pictures of harvest on the screen. Did you see that? Yes. So today, there is a question to you and to me. What is harvest? Why do we celebrate harvest? So there's a little information that I want to try and share. So, uh, Hannah, you're going to read one part. When you read one part, you also read the second part. And then, because you, you read the two parts and finish. Amen? So let us start with Hannah. Okay. Harvest Festival, what is Har Harvest Festival? Harvest Festival is a celebration of the food grown on the land. Thanksgiving ceremonies and celebration for a successful harvest are both worldwide and very ancient. Why do Christians celebrate harvest? Harvest Festival reminds Christians of all the good things God gives to them. This makes them want to share with others who are not so fortunate. In schools and in churches, people bring food from home to harvest festival service. After the service, the food has been put on display and is usually made into parcels and given to the people in need. Exodus 34 verse 22 in the New International Version says, You shall celebrate the feast of the weeks, that is, the first fruits of the wheat harvest and the feast of the ingathering at the turn of the year. Exodus 23 verse 14 to 16 the three annual festivals three times a year you are to celebrate a festival to me celebrate the festival of unleavened bread for seven days eat bread made without yeast as I commanded you do this at the appointed time of the month of Aviv 
for in that month you came out of Egypt. No one is to appear before me empty-handed. Celebrate the festival of the harvest with the first fruits of the crops you sow in your fields. Celebrate festival of ingathering at the end of the year when you gather in your crops from the field. Um, Deuteronomy 24, 19 to 21. When you reap your harvest in your field and have forgotten a sheep in the field, you shall not go back to it. It shall be for the alien, for the orphan, and for the widow, in order that the Lord your God may bless you in all the work of your hands. When you beat uh, your olive tree, you shall not go over the boughs again. It shall be for the alien, for the orphan, and, the, and for the widow. When you gather the grapes of your vineyard, you shall not go over it again. It shall be for the alien, for the orphan, and for the widow. Leviticus 23, verse 22. When you reap the harvest of your land, moreover, you shall not reap to, to the very corners of your field, nor gather the gleaning of your harvest. You are the leaf. You are to leave them for the needy and the alien. I am the Lord your God. Amen. 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 Thank you. Thank you so much. Sometimes, as you come in this house of worship, we forget that the people who have planned throughout the weeks to just come to Stop Church. So we want you to know that visitors, we have visitors who don't worship in this church. You might have come first time, you might have come second time. So uh, anyone who knows you have come to visit us, can you stand where you are? Just stand where you are so that we can see that we've got visitors in the house. Can you stand, please? And then let us shake hands and say, welcome, welcome, welcome to Stock Church. Let us greet them. Let us greet them. also have families that don't come to church, not because they don't want to come to church, but because of our many health problems. I want to remember this time that we have Pat Thompson, who would have been sitting here on the organ here to play an organ, but she can't come to church. I also want to remember Brother Wild, who would have been sitting there but he doesn't come to church because he's not feeling well. But in an also special way, I want to say thank God that we have my brother here, Brother Len Thompson. Not all of us have come to see you, but you have been in our prayers. We're very grateful that today he's able to come. We might be able to remember somebody, somebody out there who hasn't been able to come to church, not because they don't want to come, but because they have challenges, health challenges. Sometimes they might not be health challenges. It could be some discouragement. It could be something else that is bothering them. Let us remember these people because they, they form one part of this family. This is a harvest sermon. I would like us to um, turn again to the book of Exodus 34 Chapter 34, verse 22. Exodus, chapter 34, verse 22. Amen? If I'm reading from the New International Version, it's going to be different from the other version, but the message is the same. So we are going to start from, from, from this book, then I'll start from the New, New International Version, which, states, which says strictly and openly, you shall celebrate. You shall celebrate 
the feast of weeks, that is, the first fruit of the wheat harvest, and the feast of the ingathering at the turn of the year. The other version, which is New King's version, it says, and you shall observe. What does it say? You shall observe the feast of the weeks of the first fruits of wheat harvest and the feast of ingathering at the year's end. Amen? But then I also want you to, let us go down and get the book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. The book of Matthew chapter 9 verse 37. You're looking for it? Okay. I want us to look at that one, but I, what I want you to do then is that we have to connect the two. What we're going to do is to um, look at chapter 9. Verse 37, before we go to 37, let us go to 36. So we'll go to 36 and finish with 37. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless. Now I'm reading you international version, like sheep without a shepherd. Then 37. When he said, then he said to his disciples, what did he say to his disciples? Amen. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Amen? Amen. The story of the harvest is only important when you want to think about what happens, the process of food on the table. Christians, anyone who is in here, we are here not because someone came to our houses to check us to come to church. But it's because we come from a background that there's this particular day that we come to worship. So when that time, that day comes, everything else stops. Amen? Amen. And it doesn't matter whether somebody calls you to go and work on a shift or whether your working place has put you on, on the job on that particular day, you still say, can I go to church? But because the fact, the fact that we are Christians, and because we know that we need to come to worship, there's also another practice we have grown up with, is that when the food, when the food is on the table, it is not possible just to touch the food. Someone will say, let us pray. Does that sound right? Is that anything new? Now, why do we pray for the food? Can somebody volunteer enough to tell me why we pray for, we pray for the food before we can eat it? Sorry, Lenny? The present from the Father. Mommy, mommy, oh. We are thanking God for the food. Anyone from here who can tell me why? Yes, my sister. Hallelujah. People are starving. They don't have food, and then you have food on your table. You have every reason to appreciate that God has given you that food on the table. The reason why we are here this morning, the reason why I'm standing here this morning, and the reason why you've got this food on the table, because I want to say to you, the food that you pray for on the table, before it comes on that table, it has to be a crop. Mm -hmm. No one is eating plastic. Not long ago, I heard I heard that uh, in Africa, people started warning us that if you if you I don't want to mention the where it comes from, but they said uh, be careful with the kind of rice you buy. Some rice comes from another country; it becomes it's from plastic. Now I am not talking about plastic, 
Because if somebody is feeding somebody plastic, it's not because somebody wants to eat plastic. You can eat plastic because somebody is evil enough to give you plastic on the table. I'm talking about the food that you eat on the table, which is coming from the garden, and that food is something like this. Amen? Amen. We are not going to be shaken around. We are going to talk about the creation of God who creates food to come on the table. Before you eat your food on the table, always remember somebody, somebody out there spent time in the garden. And also somebody up there in heaven watered that seed. And then that food was ready. Somebody had to remove it from the garden to the storehouse. And somebody had to take it from the storehouse and create it into a food or whatever you want to eat it. And then you go to the supermarket and you find it already processed. There is a process. The problem that we have is that we don't see the process. Someone will tell me here, and we have been fighting over the period with the Bible and whatever is written, harvest is pagan. I will say to you, harvest is not pagan. Bible, you have read the Bible. Haven't you seen the Bible talking about harvest? Have you seen the Bible talk about harvest? Yes. Therefore, if the Bible is talking about harvest, that we should celebrate harvest, and therefore celebrating harvest here is pagan. It is pagan. But it's the Bible. Bible. God is only asking you. God is only asking you. Remember that the food before it comes on the table, I watered it. I blessed it. I gave people the energy to remove it from the field to the storehouse. And then it comes on the table. Do you need special science? Do we need to go to a special school to appreciate what I'm talking about? No. Ladies and gentlemen, there's a lot of literature, especially with the internet now. I'll tell you, you've got to be very careful. There's a lot of literature on the run, on the loose. But let us see what exactly we're talking about as Christians. If you're coming from the background that I come from, you will appreciate that this is not anything new. I come from a background where I've grown up to see my family, my parents, taking me to a field. But I do know that in here there are also people who come from the background where they've grown up seeing their parents taking them to the garden. I also know I've heard more than once that there are people in here who actually grew up at a farm. Amen. Amen? You grew up at a farm. There are people, if we come from Africa, most of us who come from Africa, it is not new to have a garden. Because that's where we come from. And in fact, even when you, even when you come into town and become somebody who can put on a tie and say, and you, can make, you cannot make your own tea and everybody's working for you, you find that, especially in Malawi, people still... People still say, I want to have my own garden. Just a garden, you can go on a sand and just see whether how the crops are being, are, are being looked after because it becomes a practice that you want to see that there's a process. The process in order for you and me to go to Tesco, to go to Morrison's, and to go and find a pack of rice, a bag of, a bag of rice on the, on the shelf, and find whatever you're looking for. Now we are blessed. We have shops where I live. You can find shop from every country. You can find a Polish shop. You can find a shop from Eastern world. You can find a shop, the African shop. You can find, you, when you go in there, you find that everything that they eat in that country is in that shop. Amen? But before we get to the shop to get that food on that shelf, this is the process. And I will tell you the reason why you have to worship and thank God for the harvest. I will tell you. The farmers go to the ground. They go and work on the ground to take away the weeds and make sure that the ground is ready. And then they wait for the first rain. The first rain comes, the ground is wet, and they go and they plant seeds. Where's Andy? I, I, want to, I want you to give me the slide, the slide where someone 
someone is planting seeds. Are we there? Hello, Carol? Can you give me the picture of someone is planting seeds on your... Uh, just give me that, just give me that. So they'll go and work in the garden, and they'll wait for the first rain. Who bring... They are working in the garden. The garden is dry, right? They have taken the weeds, they have prepared it. But they are waiting for the rain, right? Who brings the rain? I can't hear you. Who brings the rain? Can you, can you, I know that it is possible that there are farms that are able to water the garden using machines, right? Who, who, who creates the water? Can you have a farm with a machine to carry water, but water is not made by God? Therefore, you tell me we have science, we can carry water to water the garden because there's no rain, but the water is not God's rain. Anyone challenge me here that you have seen water that is done by a human being? Is it possible? So we still have, we still have the garden that has been worked down properly by Brother Thompson, for example. He has actually done that garden. He's ready for uh, sowing his seeds. But you're waiting, this is the seeds, but he's waiting for the water. So whether you get the water from the river, whether you get the water from, from, uh, from the pipes, that water is not yours. It's no man's water apart from God. God creates water. God brings water. Science has never created water. So water will come and the garden is watered. Amen? God has, has watered the garden. After watering the garden, the seeds that you see there will go on the ground, and when it goes on the ground, then the, ha then the, the, the whole process starts. The, the seeds will shoot out of the ground. Hooray! Every farmer is happy because he sees that the, the seeds that went to the ground ha, are shooting up, which means there's a promise of life on those seeds. Amen? Amen? God is the one controlling it. So he will, he, God will come and look at the farm. He will say, oh, okay. Now, if I put too much water, the seeds are not going to grow well, right? Coming, coming from Africa, if you put, if there's too much rain, whatever you put in your ground, even though it has shot up, it will not continue. So God will give you just a little bit of water to keep it going. It will keep it going. And we go to the garden again to take out the weeds and everything. But you know what? God at the time, he will stop the, he will actually stop the water coming from heaven. He will stop the water coming from heaven. Sometimes we don't see this, but if you're coming from a background where you've grown up with farm or farming, you appreciate that God literally manufactures the food that we have. So you literally wait. Where I come from, in Malawi, when the rain doesn't come, people still, people, the entire country go to a stadium to pray for the water, to pray for the rain. And people go and pray in all their denominations. They gather at one particular point to pray for the rain until the rain comes. And when the rain comes, then the crop grows. It grows and develops. Give me the picture of a maize that is ready. Hello? Give me the picture of maize that is ready. You, you will see a picture that now the maize, no, 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 the one that is green before that. We've come to this point, right? The maize is ready. Now it's ready. Now, when I say the maize, you might not be eating maize. You might come from a background where you don't eat maize. But the message is the crop is ready. It could be rice. It could be anything else. But it is ready. But to come to that level which you see, that means the process has taken place. One, the farmer went to the ground to work on the ground. Two, God provided the first rain. Three, the farmer went back and planted the seeds on the ground. Four, and then God watered again, and the seeds developed into something that is coming from the ground. It becomes now a crop. And this crop is growing up to come, and then it gets matured. Now it has, it has matured, which is what you see. The maize is ready. 
When it comes to that level, there's trouble because we we, need, we, want, we want to go and get it from the ground, from, from the farm as it is green. And that's the reason why at this time, when we go to the shops, we can buy green maize, can we? Yeah. yeah, at that level, my mother would say, don't go to that garden. And if, if, if I'm going to say, you've got to be careful. But then obviously, the whole thing is that now she's protecting it because not long after that, it is going to dry ready for what? ready for harvest. Now, it is now dry. The next slide. The next slide. The maize is dry. It is now dry. It is ready for harvesting. It is ready to be taken out of the ground, out of the farm, to be brought home, to be kept for one full year, that we can eat the food. Ladies and gentlemen, the harvest, it doesn't stop there where you see that. Until, until the farmer takes out that and brings it home. Do we have any picture of people bringing the food home? Do you have any picture there? Can we come down and see? More pictures? More, yeah, that's the grain is ready. Aha! Uh -huh. If you're coming from Africa, you'll see something that is something similar to that. Some of these ladies you see here, they might have beautiful, beautiful, beautiful hair, but I'll tell you that they have carried they have carried that basket. If you're coming from Zimbabwe, if you're coming from Malawi, I know that you have carried that. Because, they, and in fact, they have got their own technicality. They can carry it without, without actually shaking. <laughs> Regina, does that sound new? It doesn't sound new because you can carry, they've got their own technicality. They'll put it on the head without even supporting it. I can assure you, when it comes to that, when it comes to that level, every farmer is happy. Every farmer, farmer is celebrating. And you know what? They don't allow to leave their grain at the garden. They can wake up to midnight. They want everything that is in the garden to be secured back home. But above all, they're actually saying, we are not going to be hungry for one more year. Ladies and gentlemen, I said the other time to another church, when you live in the UK, you don't see how God blesses us to have the food on the table. But if you think about it, you have heard people saying, this year there is drought. When they say there is drought, it means there hasn't been any rain. No science can, bring, can replace the rain. No science under the ground can bring rain in another form other than God making sure that there must be water. Whether you are pumping that water from, the, from some place, whether it is a small dam, God must put water there. That's the more reason why I'm standing here to say, my brother, my sister, let us celebrate the harvest. God has blessed it to be able to come to this point. I don't have to be told anything else different other than the fact that having grown up where I've seen crops turning into mature mess, mature food, and then comes on the table, I therefore can only appreciate God when the food is cooked and is on the table, but I can't appreciate when it comes from the harvest. I can't appreciate when it comes from the garden. I'm not going to be told that. It, it just becomes common sense that the process is straightforward. From the garden to the table, we don't stop celebrating God's blessing. That's the reason why I'm standing here to say to you, what you see here is a process where God got involved in it. There's no human science. God created it. God has enabled the water to, 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 to support this crop to grow to what it is today and it has been harvested. There's something else I want to say about harvest. Harvest, according to the Bible, it is also a time of sharing. The Bible says that you should, this is the time that when you harvest, you don't just harvest and keep it in your house. You also harvest to share with others. That's what the Bible says. We have read it more than once. You heard my two daughters reading. That's exactly what the Bible says. It is time for sharing. Yes, we celebrate that. I have today, the owner of the farm says his name is Mr. Boas. He allowed me to take 
whatever was there. But you know what? He didn't even restrict me. I was able to pick what I wanted, not from the leftovers now. I was able to pick what I wanted enough for me to bring home. Harvest is a time to share. The Bible also tells us, as we have read more than once, God is saying to us, when you harvest, don't make the whole garden clean. Leave something for someone. Someone who might not have his own garden. Someone who might be a stranger in the area. <laughs> I've just remembered. My wife was asking me this morning. He says, but there is a process we measure. We, we call at home. And I said, you know what? We call it to Kufutula. <laughs> so <laughs> there's a, um, at home, what used to happen was, when we were time of growing up, when you go to the garden, and with your parents, they'll go and harvest and take everything home. And then people in the area who don't have enough food, they would actually come to you and say, can we go to your garden and pick up whatever you can pick? And you say, go ahead. It never occurred to me that it was an issue. But now I can see my father and my mother never had a problem. They said, yeah, you can go. Please go. So they'll go. You find that when they go, they'll pick up leftovers. They might even come back with a harvest, a big harvest. That is the harvest that you see there. What can that be? Uh, your eyes? Ionica? What's that? Is that wheat? Wheat? Yeah, that's wheat. So anyway, so harvest is not only about you and me. It's not about our gardens and get harvest from there, but also to share with somebody who might need it. Today, we are going to do exactly the same. This that you see down here, we have brought boxes. We will put in the boxes and share with the community. Because you never know, there might be somebody on this community, on this street, or around here, who might have not eaten for the past two days. By just giving them one cabbage, just giving them an apple, it might be a blessing. Harvest is not just about the celebration of the food here. Harvest is the time for giving. But what does the Bible say also about harvest according to Jesus? Jesus, in Matthew's chapter 8, going to chapter 9, he goes to preach. He go to synagogues. He went to preach. He healed the sick. He went all over and prayed for people who needed help, who needed a blessing. But above all, he came to this place. As he was preaching and healing the people, people came in their large numbers. And Jesus said to his disciples, in Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Can we read again? Matthew chapter 9, verse 37. Ionica, can you read to lead the congregation? Matthew chapter 9, verse 7. What does it say? Then said he unto his disciples, Yes. The harvest truly is plenty. Yes. The are few. Hallelujah. We have talked about food from the farm to be able to come to the table. But Jesus is saying it doesn't stop there. It just does not stop there. You have another harvest. Another harvest is that I want you to go out there. Go out there and preach the word of God. Go and harvest out there. Bring someone in the church. Tell somebody the story of Jesus. It doesn't help. Sitting in this church, I have been in this church for the past, I don't know, over maybe close to 18 years. Not even one soul from that part of the street to the other side of the street. Not even one soul walks in this church as a member. Have we been able to harvest? Can we say that we have harvested? We haven't harvested. The church is full. No one comes from this area or from this area. We are so happy to come in a beautiful source every Sabbath. But no one comes from the neighbors. Have we harvested? Have we harvested? Yes, we have. Yeah, but have, do we have somebody that we can say the, the neighbor next door is here? 
If the neighbor is coming now, fine. But you see, I'll tell you what. The church must wake up to harvest for the Lord. Let us wake up and go up there and proclaim the love of Jesus so that others can learn him learn about him. Others can see what we do and follow us. Let us harvest and make another church because if we have harvested enough this church is going to be small. This church has seen a lot of transformation and I'll say to you that if you haven't been to the church for the past six months I'll tell you that this church is no longer what it used to be. We have seen transformation in the building. You can see the screens all over but I can tell you that there have also been programs. We have seen our children from last year, we have seen our children get involved in the clubs. We even have seen that Raymond is here, we have seen Raymond Samantha and everybody else, we have seen children who don't even come to this church. Their parents don't worship in this church, they got involved in the Pathfinder. What does the church say? Amen. What happened when they walked away? We didn't even follow them. One day we were talking about it. We have seen the club who getting bigger, very colorful, colorful functions taken by children whose parents don't come to the church. Isn't that a harvest? But what, where it becomes not a harvest is where the children come in, when they get discouraged for some reason and they walk away, we can never follow them. No one was able to go to these children's parents to say thank you for the children to participate in this church until they got discouraged. But you know what? Stoke Church, we have a challenge. It is time to harvest. It is time to go out there. It's not about sitting here and have Bible study every afternoon. It is time to take our feet and go and tell Jesus, Jesus is coming again. Let us go and harvest. It's not about preaching to me. Let us go and preach to somebody. Amen? Amen. That is what God wants. Wants us to harvest. We have seen programs coming in this church. Sister Vilma, thank you. We have seen programs coming in this church. We have seen uh, Edwards, John Edwards, you are here. Programs starting on the, on the, on, on, on the car park. Seeing curries, calling, cooking classes. The community getting involved. What we are saying is that if the community can come and see us having curries and learn from what we can eat and what we can cook, maybe one day they are going to worship with us. That is a beautiful program. We have seen door to door, uh, Brother Gibbon is here. We have seen going, going door to door to, to, to give away books. Yes, that's beautiful. But you know what? If you give away a book, we still have a challenge. Have they just chucked it into a bin? If you give somebody a book, and you say to him, this is the book. Maybe what he's going to do is after taking that book, he's just checking the bin. So we still have a responsibility. We have given away the book. We have given away the tract. But we must go back and see, are they reading it? Ladies and gentlemen, I'll say to you, Stock Church is no longer the same. Stock Church is on the run. Stock Church is walking. Stock Church is singing. But Stock Church is not, should not sing to itself. Stock church, don't sing to yourself. Don't sing to me. Go and sing to someone on the street. That is what we need to do. Go door to door and say, Jesus is coming again. Because God wants us to harvest. That's what God wants us to do. You're not going to harvest it from me. I'm not. It doesn't make sense that someone has gone to the farm, he has taken his, his, his crop to the house, and he has got the crop, a crop in his house, and you say, I've come to harvest. How can you harvest when someone has already kept the crop in his store? Can you harvest from somebody's store? No. no. If you want to harvest, you go out there and harvest. If you are wasting time and gossip and struggle, waste your time to talk about who does what and who doesn't what, that is not harvest. This is the time, ladies and gentlemen, to go out of this door and out of the other door and worship God out there. Tell somebody you have a story to tell. 
tell somebody. Stock Church is looking for an Adventist who can tell somebody you have a story to tell. Stock Church has got people, has got a responsibility. There are people, especially mo most of our friends from Africa. We come here and we are stuck with shifts. And because we are stuck with shifts, we even forget that we can go to worship. And then we are coming back and we are saying, but you know what? Back in my home, I used to go to church. But here I don't go to Why don't you go to church? Why? Tell me why you can't go to church because you're in the UK. Back home you are able to go to church. Why shouldn't you go to church in the UK? What is the problem? We have people out there who are stuck in their houses. Monday to Sunday, every day is a shift. Come on, people. Every day, Monday to Sunday, every day is a shift. We have a challenge. Let us go and harvest. If you know somebody who is not coming to church because he's discouraged, ladies and gentlemen, let us go as a team to go and work for the Lord and harvest. It doesn't help us to come here and sit here and just enjoy the music and whatever. And there's somebody, 10 years ago he came to UK, but he has never gone to church. And we know him. We know them. We even have people here who have got families. Families who can never step their feet into the church. It might be a man, it might be a woman who has somebody at home, maybe called a best half. If you ask the elders, if you ask the discourse, discourse if they are going to give the family, they will tell you any all. Isn't it easier to see that in that family there is somebody in that family who is already coming to church. Isn't it easier to know that there is a man by his name that you know of who previously was a Christian but is no longer a Christian? Isn't it easier to identify that person and go and harvest for the Lord? I'm not going to take your time. I'm saying we have learnt that the process that we see right from the very beginning of the crop is that the water is uh, the, uh, the, the seeds are watered and harvest is taken from wherever it's supposed to be to the storage. And then we have seen that at the end of the day, from the storage, the food is found on your table. As we worship and thank God for the food on the table, we should also thank God for making that crop to grow in the garden. It is not a pagan practice. A Christian must, it, you don't have to be taught. You just don't have to be taught that for you to have that food on the table, somebody suffered to grow it out there. Somebody watered it. Forget about pagan. Let's talk about the practicality of crop in the garden to come to the table. And that's what I'm talking about. In Malawi there is a there is a, 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 a tradition. They say that if you have a daughter, somebody comes, or you have a son, and they're getting married, people will say, if you are marrying this girl, you must know that somebody is behind this girl. Somebody made this girl what she is today. Could it stand up? Just could it, could it, just could it stand up. Just stand up there. Someone for could to be what she is now, for could to be as beautiful as she looks now. Someone was able to tell her this is the way to stand. So she was able to stand and fall. She was falling, and she was told to stand again. And then she was told, No, 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 mommy, this is the way you you, you wipe your mouth. And she was able to wipe her mouth. And there was a time Kuz was growing up, touching everything and eating everything that she picks on the, on the, on the, on the floor. And the mom and dad were saying, no, no, this is dirty. And then there was a time that she grew up and she became a girl. Now mom and dad are not here, but she, she's able to stand on the mirror and say, how do I look? <laughs> Sit down, baby. Sit down. So in Malawi, they will say, you want this girl. Remember, Bwemba, Bwemba is a fruit. 
Bemba grows on a tree. Also appreciate the tree. You can't say you come to the table and there is beef and there is rice and you say let us pray and then you want to pray and you even want to pray a wrong prayer a wrong prayer but you don't want to pray for this rice for it to be rice on the table it came from the field like that that part you want to you want to disconnect you want to forget that part you are only happy to see the rice the rice on the table no it starts from there to come on the table that should not be pagan. That is normal. If God blessed, blessed the crop to grow on the field, to come to the table, that is not pagan. That is normal that God blessed the crop to come to the table. Therefore, if it is that blessing, we need to be able to remember God that he blessed us. But similarly, it is, impos it is also important that God is saying, you must harvest. Harvest for me. Go out there and harvest for me. Bring people in my church. Harvest for me. There must be somebody in here. Can you go and harvest if you're not ready? Could you know which chapter to read if you're not ready? So we have another challenge. Is to ask someone in here. Who is willing to go and harvest with us? Is there somebody amongst us who is not baptized, who just want to stand up and say, Lord, bless me and prepare me to go and harvest for you? Is there somebody who wants to go through some lessons to learn how to talk to people out there to bring the harvest to the house of the Lord? If you are there and you want to learn what God can do for you, I would like you to stand. Is there somebody amongst me, amongst us, who actually says, you know what, Lord, I know, I am part and parcel of the process, but help me. Help me to be someone who can go and harvest. Uh, yes, I was baptized. Yes, I'm a Christian. But I want to renew again. I want to renew my connection with you that I can stand out there in the rain and tell them your love. Are you standing with me? That together we can pray and ask the Lord to bless us, to be a blessing to somebody, to harvest for the Lord. If you think you can join me to stand up and go out there and preach the word and tell somebody the love story of God and be able to harvest that person to be part and parcel of us, stand with me. Amen? We are going to have season prayers. I'm going to have, I'll ask my, uh, my, my fellow brothers, my fellow brothers, they're not just brothers, they are uh, just ordinary brothers, they're fellow brothers. Uh, Elder Javon, can come and help us pray. And uh, <coughs> Elder Jugodo, come and pray with us, just to pray that we take over and we go and lead and then <coughs> The last prayer is going to be done by Lenny. You're sitting where you are, standing where you are, and you close for us. So it's come. The two elders are going to pray. We have a responsibility to go out there and preach, to harvest for the Lord. And then my brother Lenny is going to close with a prayer. Okay. As our heads close our eyes, divine God, we give you thanks for the opportunity that we can even come to your mercy seat. We ask you, dear God, <coughs> to cleanse us from all unrighteousness <laughs> and to permit our words to send to you a sweet incense. And that, dear God, you hear and act according to your will. We thank you for this, your words that has come to us. We thank you for the harvest because truly you said the harvest is great, but the laborers are few. But Lord, you did not stop there. You asked us to pray that you'll send forth laborers into the field. Yes. And so Lord, we ask at this time that you'll send forth the necessary laborers so that the field can be harvested. We ask you to cleanse us, make us worthy, prepare us, dear God, 
and help us to do your will. Because it's only those who do your will will be candidates for eternity. Help us, loving God, to love one another, yes. to be obedient to your commands, yes. your precepts, your statutes, and all your judgments. And we pray, Lord, even as you bless this field, the seeds that has produced these harvests, yes. that dear God, you will continue to bless in the future yes. and help us that the, the doors that we go to this evening, yes. that dear God, prepare those who live here yes. to appreciate what shall be done. Yes. May you help us and use us as, as your servants to fulfill your words, these mercies I ask in Jesus' precious name. Amen. Oh, Father in heaven, we would like to thank you this morning or this afternoon for the demonstration of our thanking to you, dear Lord, for the physical food you provide to us. This harvest we have brought to you today is a demonstration of thanking, dear Lord, for your providing us the food we eat. There are some people, dear Lord, in the other parts of the world who do not have enough food. And yet, dear Lord, some of us, or in here, we've got the luxury to throw away food. Yes. And there are some people who need the food, dear Lord. Yes. Who are struggling to get day by day on what to eat. Yes. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for providing us. Amen. We'd like to come before you, dear Lord. We have read that the harvest is plenteous, yes. but the laborers are few. Yes. We are talking, dear Lord, about spiritual harvest. Yes. About harvesting souls yes. and getting them ready for their soon coming. Yes. Dear Lord, we'd like to thank you for those who have stand up, for those who are willing, dear Lord, so that you provide them the means and also, dear Lord, give them the power to go into the world and, dear Lord, be the laborers to bring the people unto your kingdom. Dear Lord, we remember yes. that, dear Lord, in the Bible, yes. you called us at different times. Yes. Some were called in the early hours of the morning, yes. in the third hour, yes. fifth hour, sixth hour, ninth hour, yes. and you called others, dear Lord, at the eleventh hour. Yes. Dear Lord, we recognize that we are at the eleventh hour of this part of the world. Yes. And dear Lord, while the harvest is ready, the laborers are few. Yes. We'd like to ask you, dear Lord, that at this 11th hour, send the Holy Spirit and prepare your people to meet the Lord. Yes. Be with us. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen.